Okay, continuing our discussion on improper integrals with infinite domains of integration. We'll take a look at this example, integrating from one to infinity, the function ln of x over x squared with respect to x. So as usual, drawing a quick graph of this is gonna be helpful to help us set things up properly. And if you graph this thing at x equals one, it kind of comes above the x axis and then kind of tapers down as x runs off to infinity. So this integral is going to actually end up equating out to, as before we were talking, the area underneath this curve. So how are we going to calculate this? Well, we'll start by making a simpler problem that we can solve. We'll say, hey, if, if this was a finite area, just over here from 1 to b, I could absolutely calculate this blue shaded area with a limit. And if I let b run off to infinity as a limit, I get this equation. I get that. This integral can be expressed as limit go as b goes to infinity of the integral from one to our upper limit of integration is b now of ln of x over x squared dx. Now, this, this integral is not elementary, not really easy to do, but uh, it doesn't look like a substitution can work. So our sort of next most powerful tool is integration by parts. So we'll pick u to be uh, something that we can take the derivative of and hopefully it gets a little bit simpler and db to be everything we can integrate. Well, we can't integrate ln, so ln must be our u and x raised to the negative second power dx must be our dv. Integrating this, and I leave that to u to double check, is one over x for v and then taking the derivative of ln, you get one over x dx. I, I think I left the negative off of v when I said it, but v should be negative one over x. Okay, and we'll call this circle star. Now we'll just go ahead and we'll apply our integration by parts. Remember the integration by parts formula is uv minus integral of v du. And so uv is going to give us um, negative one over x, negative one over x times ln of x minus integral of v. All right, so here's something that uh, I do, and it's easy to forget when you're doing these problems, right? This needs to be the limit as b goes to infinity. And then this was a definite integral. So when we do integration by parts, we gotta make sure we're remembering to evaluate this from zero to b. And this new integral is also from zero to b. Um, it's okay to leave the limit off the front of the integral because we pull the limit to the outside of this large square bracket, which I'll close when we're done here. So v du gives us negative one over x times one over x dx. All right, so this is now equal to, equals to limit b goes to infinity of sizable parentheses here, negative one over x ln of x. This whole expression up here is negative x to the negative second power, which we've already integrated once. So we'll kind of borrow that math. And what we'll get is, and what we'll get is negative one over x when we do that integration. And now this whole expression, now the whole expression needs to be evaluated from zero to b before we take the limit. So I'm gonna come back over here to the left side of the screen. We've still got our limit, b goes to infinity. And uh, we're gonna evaluate this thing for b. Our first expression is going to be negative ln of b over b, combining this stuff, um, minus one over b. Now we need to address the zero, so minus the entire quantity. Uh, Ooh, sizable mistake. You guys probably noticed this. That one over here became a zero. It needs to be a one everywhere we dealt with it there. So now, now it's gonna be okay. Now we can deal with x equals one. We're gonna get negative one over one, which is just negative one times ln of one, which happens to be zero. So this expression is gonna go to zero minus one over one, which is just minus one. So and our square bracket for the limit. 
Now let's tidy up the expression inside of our, our square brackets. So we got still taking the limit as B goes to infinity of negative ln of B over B minus one over B plus one because this negative and this negative make it positive there. All right, ready? What do we got here? Well, uh, if we tried to evaluate this stuff, if we tried to deal with the limit now, well, we'd put infinity in and one over infinity, this whole expression would go to zero and plus one would be unimpacted. But what about off to the side? Let's, uh, let's grab a blue pencil here and let's, let's deal with the limit as B goes to infinity of negative ln of b over b. If we plugged in infinity, we would get negative infinity ln goes as its input runs off to infinity, slowly approaches infinity over infinity. And what we see here is infinity over infinity is an indeterminate form of a limit. So we can apply L'Hopital here, which would give us the limit as b goes to infinity of taking the derivative of the top, well, the negative still stays out front. Derivative of ln of b is one over b, and the derivative of b is just one. And so we get one over infinity for our whole limit. This goes to negative one over infinity, which any way you slice it approaches zero. And so when we deal with the limit here, uh, by virtue of all that blue math we did off to the side, Applying L'Hopital, we see that our first part of our limit goes to zero as well. And we're left just with uh, the limit as B goes to infinity of one, but one isn't impacted by B. So our answer is one. Another kind of nice tidy result, uh, unexpected, infinitely bound, or yeah, kind of in a way an infinite area, but it actually converges to a nice tidy number. All right, this brings us to the second type of improper integral anything with a discontinuous integrand. So oftentimes infinite, these end up being infinite ranges over a domain of integration. The uh, below is an example of that. And we're gonna do the same idea where this time we're gonna let our, uh, okay, let me say that again. So we're gonna sort of capitalize on the same idea. We're gonna move our limit of integration towards our vertical asymptote or towards our discontinuity. Most of the problems we're gonna look at are vertical asymptotes, but this can be applied to any discontinuity as well. So let's take a look at the integral from one to zero of one over the square root of x dx. So this integral represents that area on the graph shown to the left. Um, we can't directly calculate this, but what we can do is we say, hey, where's the problem? The problem is at that vertical asymptote. So I'm gonna let one be our upper limit of integration, and I'm going to let A be our lower limit of integration, and I'm going to let A drag it closer and let it approach one, or zero rather. So rewriting our integral, we have the limit as A goes to zero of uh, the integral from A to one of one over the square root of X. Now, it didn't work this one out. Uh, we're going to see other examples. This is a relatively, um, I'll leave it to you to check this one, remembering that square root of x in the denominator is x to the negative one half power. So in general, if you're dealing with a problem that has a discontinuous integrand, your, the method and way to approach this is to first find the discontinuity. Often it is vertical asymptote. Um, set up the integral as a limit, just like we did before. Determine where your moving limit of integration is going to be. That'll determine how the limit is set. And then integrate the result, and then evaluate the limit, just like we've been doing. And in general, uh, the integral is said to converge if the limit exists and diverge if the limit does not exist. This is for all, not just this type, but also the infinite range or infinite domain of integration. Any improper integral, this is what we say. If the integral converges if the limit exists and it diverges if it does not. And in general, we've drawn some pictures and seen some graphs so far, but graphing calculators are helpful. I find it exceptionally important and helpful to draw the sketch showing your moving limit of integration when you're setting these things up. For instance, if we graphed this function, it would look like this. We go from down there and then up like that. So you go from one here to negative one, something like that. This is what x to the 
two thirds power looks like. We've got a problem here. We've got this sharp little cusp. And so we're gonna to have to break this thing into two integrands. And so for the lower portion, we could start at negative one and calculate an area that we know how to do and kind of let this limit of integration approach zero. So since this would be an upper limit of integration, I'm gonna say that this is equal to our first integral, which would be leaving some room for the limit. I'll figure out what my limit is in a moment, but this thing's gonna start at negative one and go up to an upper limit of integration. So it's, since it's an upper limit of integration, I'll call this B and I will let B go to what value? B is approaching zero. So there's the first part of our integral. Now for the second part, we have to do what we can. Well, I know I wanna go up to one, but this just take an arbitrary value in between. Since that would be the lower limit of integration, I'm gonna let that be A. And what do we need A to do? We need A to also approach zero here. So the second part of this integral could be written as, again, we'll put the limit in there. We'll worry about that later. Set up our integral. Our integral starts at A and goes to one. Okay, that means that A needs to go to zero. And again, our function is x to the 2 thirds dx. And on the next slides, we will work this problem out um, completely. So I changed colors. Uh, the left side's blue, right side's orange. We saw this on the last slide. But drawing your own picture can really help make sure that you get these limits and the moving uh, limit of integration correctly set up. So we'll take a look at both of these pieces. First, we'll do the blue one, the left-hand piece. Um, but sometimes here's a strategy to do these problems. Just evaluate the integral, not worrying about the definite integral, not worrying about the bounds at all, just do it indefinitely. So just do the in integral in general. So integral of x to the 2 thirds power, add 1 to the power, 5 thirds, multiply by the reciprocal, 3 over 5 times x to the 5 thirds. Now we're ready to, because we've done the integration, you know, this whole integral becomes this expression. Now we're ready to evaluate the bounds of the integral and then the limit. So first we'll plug in the result of our integral, we'll evaluate it from b to negative one. We've done that. Reminder here that anything times itself, an uh, odd number of times is negative. So negative one times itself three times is negative one. So the third root of negative one is negative one and negative one to the fifth power is still negative one. So this whole expression goes to negative one. And that's how you get this positive down here. Negative three fifths times negative one gives you positive three fifths down there. Now, since we've got B in there, now it's time to let B go to zero. Well, this is, this is just something we can plug in for. We've done that down here. Zero to the any power is gonna be zero. So zero times anything is just zero and you're left only with this three fifths. So this left-hand side area, the entire area to the left of zero is gonna be three fifths. Similarly, if you do the right-hand side, again, we've done the integral in general. So now it's just time to evaluate the integral at the, the limits of integration. Uh, one to any power just goes to one. So that remains to be three fifths as our first number. And now we'll deal with the limit as a goes to zero. Plug this zero in for a. We see that down here. Zero to any power is just zero. So that whole expression zero and you're left with just a second three fifths for the right hand side of this um, area that we're after. Putting it all together, we know the left and the right side are three fifths. And so replacing the integrals with their value, we see that we get three fifths plus three fifths equals six fifths for the entire area. And just to kind of give ourselves a check as a decimal, that would be one half. And sure enough, each of these, each of these sort of, they look like triangles, but they're not because they're curved, is about a half a unit. So if you put them together, you should get a little bit over one whole unit. And so everything checks out and seems reasonable. All right, let's work a couple more examples here. All right. Um, so the first one, the integral from zero to one of one over one minus x. What we're after is the entire area trapped here 
but we're going to do the same thing we have been doing. We're going to say, hey, our lower limit of integration is zero. Our upper limit of integration is B. And we're going to let B approach zero. Since our function isn't defined at zero, it's got a vertical asymptote there. So this integral can be written as the limit. And I like to write the integral first to make sure I've got the direction the limit should be going and things correct. So limit from zero to B of my function, one minus one, one over one minus X. Now I see that, hey, there's the upper limit and the upper limit needs to, I think I've said approach zero, but it needs to be approaching one. Okay, now what? Well, this thing is a u substitution. u is going to be 1 minus x. du is equal to just dx. And so that would give us integral of 1 over u, which is the derivative of ln. So kind of putting all that together and noticing that um, we're not going to get anything too crazy here. Do the u substitution. Do the uh, integration. Get limit as b goes to 1. See, I'm stuck in infinite mode here. Of what? What are we taking the limit of? Well. 1 over 1 minus x is the derivative of ln, natural logarithm of 1 minus x. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to b. So let's do that. Let's leave the limit outside. Limit as b goes to infinity. And now we're going to evaluate the result of our integration, ln of b, oh, 1 minus b. Notice that 1 minus b, since b is always less than 1, is going to be positive. So we don't run into any domain issues with the natural logarithm. Minus ln of 1 minus 0. ln of 1, as we've seen before, goes to goes to 0. Sorry about the hesitation there. And then what do we get here? Well, now we're interested in the limit as b goes to infinity of ln of 1 minus b. Well, to, to informally solve this, just recall that the natural logarithm is the inverse of the exponential. So it kind of goes like this. And ln of 1 minus b. Oh, well, this would be ln of x instead of trying to figure out what the transformation would give us with ln of 1 minus x here, I just hauled off and graphed it in another screen. So let's take a look at this graph. And here's our graph, ln of 1 minus x. You can see it in black. And as x goes to, x goes to, all right, we're interested in what happens to ln of 1 minus x as x approaches 1. And you can see from the graph that it just goes off to negative infinity. Uh, which brings me to a mistake. I've been back to uh, infinite mode here, but those infinities should definitely be as, as b approaches 1 there. And from the graph that we saw, we see that the limit as b goes to 1 of ln of 1 minus b goes to negative infinity. So we see that this thing runs off to negative infinity here. And so what this tells us is that the limit doesn't really exist. Yes, it goes to infinity, but we're going to say it doesn't go to infinity. It doesn't exist, it goes off to infinity. And so this tells us that our integral diverges. We cannot calculate a nice specific exact number that represents the area trapped between this curve that's shown. All right, on to our next example. And I am pretty sure our last example here of the day. Uh, another discontinuous integrand. This time we have an asymptote that goes up, vertical asymptote, in the middle of our domain of integration. Domain of, you know, we're integrating from zero to three. So here's zero to three. So we're gonna have to break this thing into two pieces as we've done with blue, as I've already done with blue and red here. Um, let's just see what we need though. In order to calculate this blue area, I'm going to need a moving limit of integration, upper one that's going to approach one. So limit as b goes to one. And then to calculate the red area, I'm going to need this lower limit of integration to approach one. So I'm going to call that a for lower limit of integration. 
putting this all together, what we get is we get equals uh, limit as b does something, integral from zero to b of my expression, one over x minus one raised to the two thirds power dx, and we're gonna let b approach one. The second part of this puzzle is going to be a limit. We'll worry about that later. And uh, this time we're taking the integral of uh, the same function once again, but our upper limit of integration is three and our lower limit is gonna be a. That means a needs to go to one. And again, our, sorry about that, our function here, x minus one raised to the two thirds power in the denominator. All right, so now we will work these examples. All right, so on towards that, we just have a blank slide for the last slide. So let's see what we can do on this slide. I'm gonna do scratch work and treat it like this. I'm gonna come back to them blue and red. You know, we'll call this blue one area A. We'll call the red integral area B and we'll see what we can find. First things first, I'm just gonna do the generic integral x minus one raised to the negative two thirds power dx, a u substitution, which I'll leave you to fill in the details for, x minus one du equals dx. So the substitution's pretty straightforward there. Will give us a result of integrating this thing. So you can think of that as u to the negative two thirds power. We add one to get u to the one third power, but it's not gonna be u, we add one to get u to the one thirds power, I'm not leaving myself enough room. We add one to get u to the one third power, and then we multiply by the reciprocal. So we're gonna multiply by three over one or just three, and then we reverse our substitution uh, as x minus one. Now this is an indefinite integral, so we would put plus c here, and it turns out we're gonna do a definite integral version of these. So using that, integral b becomes limit, as b goes to one, I'll see if I can not write infinity again, of this result of our integral, three times x minus one raised to the one third power, evaluate that from zero to b. Okay, so that's gonna be limit as b goes to one of three times b minus one to the one third power minus, three times zero minus one raised to the one third power. And then all that is done. So what do we have here? Well, first things first, what's gonna happen when we evaluate this limit? Well, the only part of the limit that's pertinent is this first expression. So what's that gonna be? That's gonna be three, uh, times one minus one raised to the one third power, that whole expression goes to zero, leaving us just with this second expression, three times negative one to the one third power. Again, one third power is the same thing as the third root of negative one, which we've seen as negative one. So that's three times negative one, that's just positive three. So our blue area is positive three. And we'll come back to that later. Um, next, we're gonna go over to the next slide for more room. And we're gonna calculate our, our second area, the red area. And our red area is gonna be the limit as a goes to one this time of the expression three times x minus one raised to the one third power evaluated from a to three. That equals the limit as a goes to one of plug in our three to get three times three minus one to the one third power minus three times a minus one, all raised to the one third power, end our limit parenthesis. And now the only part of the limit that applies here is we're gonna put one in for that a when we evaluate the limit. So our first expression is gonna be three times three minus one is two raised to the one third power. That's not gonna be a nice number, it's gonna be an irrational number. And since we're just interested in an approximation for the area here, we'll probably just approximate that. And then, what happens to our second expression? Three times one minus one raised to the one third power. One minus one is zero, zero to any power is just zero. So that goes to zero as well. And so our, our second area is three times two raised to the one third power, which if you do with a fire up a calculator, 
you'll get about 3.78 rounding to the nearest hundredth. So putting this all together, what we have is that our original integral from zero to three, one over x minus one raised to the two thirds power dx is equal to first our blue result, which was three. Uh, instead of rewriting this entire expression here, I'm just substituting in for the red and the blue areas with their appropriate color. So our first calculation saw that area A, our first integral, gave us three. And our second calculation, which is on this screen, gave us uh, 3.78, which means that the area is about 6.78. Now, does that seem reasonable? Let's go back to our graph and check it out. OK, so far, I'm, I see uh, one full square. This whole area is one full unit. That's another. So we got two. Um, this, you know, that's about a little over half. So half, half. So there's at least three. And then adding up this, that's about another one. And adding up all of these areas there, you get that are about 6.78 units trapped under this curve over that domain of integration from zero to three. So the answer seems fairly reasonable. And that's it. That is improper integrals. And I apologize, I am having a hard time stopping this. I think I need a keyboard, so let's get a keyboard involved. All right, thanks for your patience.